These AI tools like ChatGPT or Gemini or Llama 2 or any of them do some things very, very well, like pattern matching and some things not so much, like doing mathematical calculations or accessing information over the web. Here's the nice thing. You can provide your own functions for the AI tool to call at the right time and langchain for js at tool support will make that happen automatically and it's really, really easy to do. Welcome to Tales from the Jar Side. There are some things AI tools do well, like I said, pattern matching is one of them, but there are a lot of things it does poorly. What they have in the OpenAI API is something called function calling, where you can provide a function that will do what you want to do and have the AI tool call it. The problem is it doesn't call it automatically. You have to write the code to make that happen. Well, not anymore. Langchain for j will call that automatically on your behalf and do all the work for you. That's what this video is about. Let's look at it with several different examples to get a feel for how nice this is. What's the square root of the sum of the number of letters in the words hello and world? So hello has five letters, world has five letters, the sum is 10, and what's the square root of 10? So ChatGPT, and this is 3.5, by the way, this isn't the best at all. It says, sure, let's break down the calculation step by step. Step one, count the number of letters in each word, and it gets them both right. Adds them up to get the sum, takes the square root, and there you have it. 3.16 roughly, plus a few extra decimal points, and we're good. It's not necessarily obvious from the names here, but inside the OpenAI API, when you're using an at tool annotation in Langchain for J, what you're actually doing is this section called function calling. As it says, learn how to connect large language models with external tools. So the word tool and the word function calling, or the words, if you will, are somewhat interchangeable here. So in an API call, you can describe functions and have the model intelligently choose to output a JSON object containing arguments to one or more, one or many functions. The chat completions API does not call the function. Instead, the model generates JSON that you can use to call the function in your code. And that's the key. This is where Langchain for J is making life so much easier than it would otherwise be. Now to take a look at the details here, they say, here's an example. Now it, it's difficult to read, especially with the colors here, but I just want to show you the extent of it. It's not important about the details because we're looking at Python here and that's not even what I'm going to be using. So this thing starts off by saying, okay, we'll instantiate our open AI object. And they have this function, which is called get current weather with a location and a unit. And it's actually kind of already hard coded to do something. So there's nothing special about this. It's not using a real service or anything like that. It's just returning a JSON object with a location, a temperature, and a unit, and that's that's all we got. Now, this is where we're actually going to find out what to do with the functions. So this says run conversation, and you see in addition to messages like, what is the weather like in San Francisco, Tokyo, and Paris? It says tools equals, and we get this big block here Type is function and location, name, description, parameters, an object, and location. Again, that's all the description of how that get weather, get current weather function works. So down here, when they try to invoke the create method to actually go ahead and send a message to the OpenAI tool, they set tools equal to tools and say, yeah, auto meaning go ahead and, and call it if you need it. And then they get back a response and check if there's any tool calls. And if there is a tool call, they say, oh, there's an available function. Now it's time for each tool call in that collection to go ahead and invoke the tool. So you see it walk through it all the way. It's not having it do it automatically. It's returning like, oh yeah, we suggest you call the following functions. And that's no fun. Who wants to do that? 
Okay, this is that class loaded into IntelliJ, the service with tools example. Let's start with a main method without the tools. So as you can see here, it uses AI services to generate an assistant. Now, again, if you haven't seen assistant, all that is is an interface with a chat method in it. So it says string user message and string return. And by using their little mechanism here with an AI services.builder method, they're implementing that interface. It's a really neat feature of Langchain for J, and I've talked about it in a different video. Okay, so then they load their model, and this is the default open AI model. So that's using GPT 3.5 Turbo. I'm going to comment out the tools here for a moment. We'll come back to that. And then whenever you use the tools, you should actually give it some chat memory so it'll keep track of like the last up to 10 messages. And the question here is, what is the square root of the sum of the numbers of the let of letters in the words hello and world? So it invokes the question and just prints the answer. So I'm not going to use the tool support. I'm just going to run it as is and see what we get. Keeping in mind, ChatGPT is actually good at this sort of thing. It used to be terrible. It's gotten better. And you can see the answer here is exactly right. It says, okay, the number of letters in hello is five. The number of letters in world is five. The number of letters in the words hello and world is 10. Square root of 10 is approximately 3.16. We're good. In other words, we don't even really need the tool support for this. <laughs> Although again, on all these other AI models, the support is, shall we say, a little dicey. But let's see how they actually do implement the tool support. So up here in the rest of the class, they have this static inner class here they're calling a calculator. And in the calculator, they have a method called string length, a method called add, and a method called square root, SQRT. Now this looks all commented out. Let me enable the tools again. So in the tools calculation, when they're building up their service, they're saying, yeah, use that calculator. And let's see what the tool annotation means. So the tool annotation says, uh, Java methods annotated with that tool could be considered tools the language model can use. So I put in some prints here to say, we called string length with s equals and get the length, or with add, we called, we say that we're here, we're in, add them up, and here we do the square root, and that works fine too. So in other words, now the tool can delegate to those methods if needed. So same exact calculation with the tools here. Let's see what we get. Now, not terribly surprising, it's going to come up with the right answer. But let's see how it delegated to the tools. You see, there's a tool execution request for string length with the word hello. Great, got it. And we got back five. And likewise, a delegation to string length again for world. And we got back five. And then here is a delegation to add for five and five and got back 10. And this one delegated to square root with 10 and got back the right answer. So in other words, by providing this class with several methods in it and added to annotating those methods with that tool, you got the AI to use it automatically. Okay, now let's look at an example where that tool support really is going to help. Here is a very simple Java record. It's a record called person where a person has a first name, a last name, and a local date. Now that local date can already be problematic because when you use a regular JSON parser, it depends on the parser as to how well they handle local dates. But for the moment, we'll go with it. Now, I have this interface called a person extractor, and this is very much like the interface we just saw with the calculator, with the assistant rather, where we're going to tell Langchain for J to implement this interface on our behalf and therefore use it. So in this case, my interface has a simple method called extract person from. It takes a string and it, we're going to return an instance of that person record. Now I added this system message. So the system message will add context without posing an actual question. So I've tried to get detailed about this. Extract information about a person using the fields contained in the person record in the class path. If you use JSON as an intermediate format, return only the JSON data itself rather than wrapping it in other content like 
three back ticks JSON that might affect deserialization. So I just want the JSON data back, which then Langchain4j can use its JSON built-in parser to convert into a person record. Okay, so far so good. Now let's look at a test. Once again, I'm using the AI services.builder on that interface with the language model. Now the language model I've set up is just GPT 3.5. Again, I'm not using the best here. I'm just using 3.5 and I have this tool, but let me comment out the date time tool. We'll come back to that in a moment. So this is going to start up the person extractor implementation so that I can go ahead and invoke this. Let's invoke it down here. And what my text is, Captain Picard was born in Le Bar, France on Earth on the 13th of Joyeux, percent D years from now. Now, what's the percent D? Well, I calculated the number of years from now on this. 2305 minus the current year means it's 281 years from when this recording was made. His given name, Jean-Luc, is of French origin. His brother, Robert, and he were raised in the family vineyard, Chateau Picard. Yes, fine. Again, just some distracting information. Now, figuring out the first name and the last name is going to be really easy because it's explicitly in there. The problem is asking it to do math, to go ahead and figure out what 281 years from now means. So I'm going to go and ask it, and then I'll check the first name, the last name, the birth date, the day of the month ought to be 13th. That's okay. That's hard-coded. The month should be July. It's in French, but hey, any AI tool can figure that out. The problem's going to be the year because it has to compute something first, and I'll just look for something within five years. So without the tool support, let's see what we get. And here's the problem. We did get a person record with its two string method, a first name, a last name. Look at the birth date, 2254. I mean, it's way off. And in fact, it's off by, well, not way off, it's 51 years off. But I have gotten all kinds of wildly varying numbers. But you see the problem is it doesn't do the mathematical calculation correctly. Okay, let's give it some tool support. So here is my date time tool. It's about as simple as you can get. I basically put in a method explicitly called years from now. Now, I don't think the name of the method matters. I think the tool argument is what matters, but nevertheless, this years from now takes an int to say how many years from now. Well, you just get the current local date and then add years and then extract the year. These are all methods from the java.time.localDate method, or the class rather. And this is really straightforward because it's going to solve another problem too. The other problem is what does years from now mean? What does now mean to the AI tool? Because it's when its training data ended, and that doesn't necessarily have to be this year. For chat GPT, that's probably last year. But now if it does understand this statement, get the year for a given years from now, that ought to work correctly. Let me go back to my test. And I'll add the tools back in and now run this test again. And we're right on. Because what you'll see is, is that here is the calculation of years from now, wound up with 281, and it wound up with 2305, which is exactly the right answer. And therefore, if you look down here, we're on. So, hey, all we had to do was to give it a class with one simple little method in it, which we annotated with that tool with an expression that is correct. And GPT 3.5 went, oh, you want me to call that to get the years from now? And we're good. Now, what I'm not showing was when I had a problem with it. When I had a problem with it is when I had a method simply called add and a method called subtract, and one was to add two numbers and one was to subtract two numbers, and I tried to get it to use that instead, and it was wildly unpredictable. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And I couldn't get it to do things reliably. And I thought that it was a problem with GPT 3.5, of course, because GPT 4, we get the answer right a lot, not realizing it's because GPT 3.5 didn't need the tool support. It was able to actually figure out 
years from now, within five, you know, it's still not quite on, but it was much closer. No, you do explicitly have to give it a hint, say in the tool argument exactly what this tool is for, and then have it use it. See, I'm not going to expose that question to the outside world. I'm using it internally to my system. It's part of my test. I know what the query is going to be. Therefore, I can make a tool that will be designed to support that query, and it gets much better. Now let's take a look at a much larger example. Everybody likes to use the weather as a RESTful web service. Instead, I'm going to look at some exchange rate calculations. Let's take a look at a RESTful web service that is actually quite useful. This is the site openexchangerates.org. It's a good way of finding reasonably current exchange rates for most of the currencies around the world. It also has a good solid free tier so that I can work with this without having to pay anything for it. So in the dashboard, you wind up signing up for an app ID. You have to register and get an ID. But once you do that, the getting started page shows this API introduction to show how to access it. And to look at an example, you see that it's basically simple GET requests. And a GET request to latest.json will give you the current exchange rates, current relatively speaking. You could also go to currencies to find out, given a, an abbreviation, what the full name of the currency is. And there's some historical rates based on dates and times. And this is what I want to access. So if I take a look at that latest one that we're talking about here, you could see that if you just do a curl request, it's a get request, so it's nothing complicated. You don't need to post, put, or delete here. You specify the URL. You put in the header to say that you're accepting JSON data, and you can either add your app ID directly to the get request, or if you prefer, you can put it in the body of the request using a special header. So we're going to take a look at that. Now I'm going to use the latest.json endpoint here in order to get the current exchange rates, and then we'll take a look at the code and see what that looks like. And then we'll have that provided as a tool for the AI model to access. Now, what you see here is a class that I've called Open Exchange Rates, just to keep it simple. I put in my API key, but I registered that as an environment variable. So that we just grab out of the environment. If you want to do this yourself, just set the same environment variable. I just called it Open Exchange Rates underscore API underscore key. Here's the endpoint, and this is the actual currencies URL. So the, the latest one I just called base, and the currencies one I call currencies URL. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the exchange rates, which is a map of currency type to the exchange rate itself as a double. I'll just keep that as a map called rates. Also, the map of string to string is the one that translates the ISO three-letter abbreviation into the full name of the currency. So what I'm doing when I instantiate this class is I'm going to go download those rates and the currencies and then keep them around. I also have a JSON builder so that I could set the field naming policy and not have to worry about camel case with underscores being con or camel case being converted into lowercase with underscores. I also set the pretty printing just to make it easier for me to look at the logging output if necessary. Okay, so if you look at the output of that RESTful web service, what you get back is a string disclaimer and some license, and both of those are just URLs. You get a timestamp for when this occurs, which they're storing as a Unix timestamp. I'm not really all that interested. I know that's as current as I can get in my current free account. Then the base currency is going to be, in my case, USD. That's the default anyway. And you could always change that if you want, but that's what I'll have. And therefore, the map of rates will all be relative to USD. So this will have entries like GBP or JPY or INR, et cetera. And that'll be the, the rate will be the rate relative to that. My response is for the currency names is this record. So this record will work for just getting the currency exchange rates. This record is just a map of the three-letter abbreviation to the full name. So here's how you do this if you want to use the 
the HTTP client that comes with Java. Now I'm using Java 21, which means the HTTP client in Java 21 actually implements auto closable so that I can wrap this in a try with resources block. It's not really all that necessary. Again, I'm just doing a quick get request, but couldn't hurt. When I make my request, I'll set that base URL, URL, pardon me, I'll put in the two headers, the accept header for JSON and the authorization, which will have my API key in here. I will send that request and just say, convert the body into a string. And if the status code is not 200, then yeah, I'm, I'm, something went wrong. I want to get out of that. But assuming it works, I'll just take the body and convert it into one of those open exchange rate response objects and I'm done. So that was easy. I also have this method here, which looks virtually identical, just a different base URL and a different response type. I did have to play with it a little bit to make sure that the type worked because of the style of the JSON data they return. But yeah, I was able to get that too. And again, this is just playing around with, with mapping from JSON to Java records. So once I've done that, here are my tools. And in fact, I'm really only using this one. So notice the tool annotation as before. The tool annotation comes from Langchain for J, and Java methods annotate with this are tools that the AI can invoke. So I'm giving it this string that says convert a monetary amount from one currency to another. So the convert method takes the amount as a double, and the from currency and the to currency, and both of those are those three-letter abbreviations. I'll log something in the console just so I can see what's going on. And this is simply taking the amount and multiply by the to rate and divide by the from rate, and I'm all set. I mean, it's a one-liner, very simple. Also, just in case I need it, I have the get currency method too, which would get the full name of a currency given its abbreviation that just calls the getter. So you see how simple that is. Now I did write a little test independent of the API. That's right here. This one just instantiates the class in the test and I get the latest rates and I check that the license is the right URL and the, uh, the terms is the U proper URL and that the timestamp is positive. I mean, I didn't actually know what I was gonna pick, so whatever. And that the base rate was USD and that if I get the rate relative to USD, that ought to be a 1.0, so that one's fine. And then I did the conversion from USD to Euros and I just print it, but I know it's positive. And then just to get the currency abbreviations, I checked one, two, three, four, five of them just to see that they're the right names. Nice and simple. That's just to make sure that my service is written properly. But next will come the fun part when I actually use it. In order to use the exchange rates, I need to have something to shop for. So what I've done is I opened up a private browser so that I wasn't logged in automatically and I went to Amazon. So if I look at Amazon simply in the US and I shop for say a MacBook Air, you see that the price is listed as $749.99. So just under $750. However, if I switch to the UK, so this is amazon.co.uk, you can see that basically the same machine is 750.09 British pounds. So obviously that's gonna be more, but what the heck, let's, take, let's grab that one as well. Then I went to amazon.in in India, and we'll take a look at that one, and that's listed here as 83,990 Indian rupees. So I'll keep that one in mind as well. And finally, I took a look at Japan as well. So this is amazon.jp and the MacBook Pro here is listed as 177,980 yen, only 14 left in stock orders soon. <laughs> Okay, well, now that I have a product in several different countries, let's move to the app and see what prices those are using the given exchange rates. So I'm going to pick my chat language model here. I'm using the builder to say there's the interface that I wanted to implement. There's the model I'm using. And then here's the part where I put in the tools. So in the tools, I'm going to add in that an instance of that open exchange rates class, which will do the download and get everything ready to go. Also, I'll increase the memory so it's gonna hold as many as 10 messages at a time. So here is the example I wanna demonstrate. 
I put in as my question at the Amazon.com website in various countries of MacBook Air costs. And these are what they were a few days ago. Things change a little bit. But there's the one in Great Britain pounds. Here's the Indian rupees. Here's the dollars. And here's the Japanese yen. And I say, which is the best deal in the result? Write out the full name of the currency and the amount. And you see, I just submit that question and get the answer. And let's take a look. And what you can see in the logging here are all these tool execution requests. This is the one that converted the Great British Pounds to US dollars. This one converted the Indian rupees. This one, of course, didn't have any conversion to do, but anyway, went through it. And then finally, this one converted the Japanese yen to US dollars. And down here is the output, and you can see the results that came out of that. And it says, therefore, the best deal for the MacBook Air is USD with a price of, which isn't surprising. I'm not logged into any of the sites, so it may be concerned about shipping out of the country or what have you. Regardless, the bottom line is, is that the AI tool automatically used the conversion in order to change exchange rates. And I didn't have to tell it to do it. I didn't have to invoke it myself. All I had to do was make sure I gave it a method that would work and then tell the AI, this is a tool you can use. And it did. Let's draw some conclusions now. The whole idea is that AI tools are very poor at things like accessing RESTful web services over the internet or doing complicated mathematical calculations or many others. Some of those we can provide automatically. In the OpenAI documentation, the resulting code gets fairly involved because you have to write out in JSON format what you have to describe all the functions you want the AI to invoke, and then you've got to do the iteration yourself. You have to go and say, oh, did you call this method? Try calling that method, and so on. Langchain for j has a built-in mechanism that allows you to simply annotate an existing method in a class and tell the AI tool to go ahead and invoke it for you and it will take care of it. Now, Spring AI has a similar capability, but this Langchain for J1 has already been established, it's released, it's usable, and that's what we just saw how to use. And we saw it on the basic example with the Langchain for J examples project. We saw it at a more interesting example where it was trying to extract a person record from a, an unstructured paragraph. And then finally, we saw it where we were able to access the exchange rates for a monetary calculation and then have the AI tool assess whether one deal is better than another when the resulting numbers, the numbers it was comparing, were in different currencies. Hopefully you found that really useful. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any other calculations or any other videos that demonstrate Langchain for J capabilities. And there are other videos in this channel in the playlist that will show you how to do that. Thank you for your attention. Have a good day. Hey, there, there's this time to tune in to Tales from the Jar, so let's begin. Shall I come in and spring on my creepy breath and don't be shy? Tales from the Jar side. Oh, yeah. Crack up in the code, let's take a ride. From design patterns to the latest trends, your weekly tech post that never ends.